together. Um, in this new form, though, if the staff is unanimously against a decision made by ASM, they can reverse it. But unless literally all 30 or 40 of the staff say, I'm not okay with this proposal going through, then um, it's really a communal decision and everyone gets their voice heard. Committees are groups, they're actually defined in our decision-making document, which is the school's constitution, as created by ASM. Um, what they do is some of them are centered around ASM or centered around helping out with decisions in the school's democracy. Others are centered around helping the school run in other ways. So I mentioned the agenda committee earlier, which organizes ASMs and controls the flow of proposals. I didn't mention we have, an, we have our own student court, which deals with the more justice aspect of government. But then there's also committees like our maintenance committee, which, although they're technically not, you know, they're not very involved with the democracy front, you know, as their name implies, they go around making sure everything's working and everything's clean. They're also just essential to running the school. And we've got many different types of committees. They're always shifting. ASM approves a new one every two or three years, and we try them out. They're very fun. I think the democratic process is definitely a good thing, and it's definitely good that students here feel free to make suggestions and to get involved in the process because that's a really important life lesson uh, and to know that you know it's good to get involved in your community. ACS is a big supporter of community service which has always been a big part of my life and so you know that's another thing I guess I would say is very important is just uh, you know learning that learning that one person can make a difference and that you know it's important to get out in your community and to try. I've talked to other people and you know not all schools emphasize that in the same way that ACS does. To me, one of the important parts about the program though, is that everybody does service, and I know there's some objections to that because should that people be forced to do service, it seems uh, antithetical to the whole idea, but I think there's some students who wouldn't do it otherwise, and for lots of different reasons, and uh, I've had some kids who were really struggling in school, really struggling with academics, who have one student who um, not only did he, he, he volunteered in like, so many elementary schools, but he himself was learning to read still, you know, but so he, he, at first he volunteered with really young kids and then he became a big brother, like, you know, we big brother, through big brother program that I was facilitating and it mattered so much to him and it was one of the areas where he would come to school confident, at least in that arena, even though when he was in the classes it was really hard as hell because he was still learning to read. I mean, thank goodness we had Diana working with him and he, he graduated being able to read. But the service part, I think, kept him feeling connected to the school and worthy of, or like worthwhile, like a worthwhile person. At first, someone had proposed relief for Katrina, uh, Hurricane Katrina, but we had a Pakistani student who stood up in the media and said, look, I want to amend this proposal and I want this money to go to relief in Pakistan because they really need things. We wanted to send, like, I think around $1,000 to New Orleans and I pointed out how with currency conversion and spending power, how that money is worth more in a third world country and that we could do more in Pakistan than we could do in New Orleans. We talked about it for a while, we agreed to send money and then we made a decision in to send the money in a bit. And Kamal got up again, he was nearly in tears, and he said, look, every day we don't send money, people are going to die, essentially. And the whole school stopped for a moment, and we really thought about it. And we went back and checked our decision out again, which is outside of process, but the fact was no one objected to that. But certainly, if it had been a lesser decision, someone might have said, you know, you can bring another proposal later. But the school came together and thought, okay, what, what do we value? And then in ASM, we made a decision to change how we did things for one meeting so that we could send that money. And it was pretty amazing uh, to f have that community come together and send off, you know, a good chunk of money which we would have been using for our own uh, personal trips um, and to send that to Pakistan. because I worry that this whole issue with us taking care of the school, which has been around since 
the beginning of time um, will become a bigger problem as we move into an even larger space. We started in a couple of classrooms down at IHS and we just keep growing and growing and growing. And um, I think it'll be great, I think in a lot of ways, uh, to have new science facilities and um, a new library and a new gym, all of that stuff's gonna be fantastic. Like those things that may not seem like such a big deal in f as far as the integrity of the school goes, I feel like little pieces might add up. Well, I'm a little nervous about it, but I think that it'll bring new faces and I don't know, bigger building. I think it'll pretty much stay the same and it'll balance out. It's one thing to be crowded, it's another thing to be spread out. And so one of my concerns is really just the, the sort of physical space that will afford us, that, that will just spread us out. And I'll see people less, I'll run into colleagues less. And I don't know, I don't pretend to really, I haven't worried a lot, so I haven't articulated in my own mind the kinds of things that that might involve. I think there's little logistical things, like right now we're really struggling as a community to figure out how can we help each other be a little bit better at taking care of our space. Respect it, you know, put the dishes where they go, recycle the things that should be recycled, compost and so on. Um, with, a, with a much larger space, that's probably going to be a, a larger problem. Which is a little scary, but it's also an opportunity when, when something like that comes up. Then you reach and you say, am I addressing symptoms or um, am I addressing causes? And that might lead to some pretty interesting and good things if you probe further. You know, you need to be happy in what you do and you need to be satisfied with what you do. It doesn't have to be the President of the United States to be meaningful. What I do is meaningful to me, whether it is to anybody else or not. I enjoy what I do, I think I do it well, and I look forward to coming to work. That hasn't always been the case with my work experience. I've had jobs that I hated. I had to go because I needed the money. This job, I come because I want to. That's why I'm here in almost 19 years, because I want to be here. I am very hopeful about the school community on into the future um, because I think it has two things that are absolutely core to its sustainability and its survival. And one of them is a core set of values. Some of them embodied in graduation by exhibition, the, the uh, anti-bias uh, principle and community service and school governance. Um, some of it uh, embodied in uh, the structures of the school, like trips uh, and family groups and committees. But a lot of it also embedded in the philosophy of change and of responding to students, listening to students and to families. And although we have these core values and beliefs that we hold dear, one of those key values is to respond to shifting and changing populations of students. The more young people we can help serve through, through the kinds of things we do, the better. It just is a challenge of us to see how to preserve all those qualities that are important to us within a, a larger student body. And I don't think those things are impossible to do. Uh, there are some very effective schools that uh, we know that are larger, more students, and, and more numbers that uh, are able to still retain that. You do have to pay some attention and make some changes where it's necessary to preserve the, the closeness that you can get in the smaller. Yeah, I'm a little sweaty on the hands.
thank you for watching.